Okay, as uh, talk about in this video, um, my expression to you guys is not to train you to be an OR specialist. Okay, if uh, say after taking this course, you develop special interest in operations research, you want to get more advanced, um, get to be more advanced in OR, um, you can get uh, maybe a master's degree or a PhD degree in OR. Uh, but as a course in engineering management, the purpose is to expose you to all the different types of problems uh, that OR can um, help. Okay, and then so when you go to work, you th um, when you like see a situation, you see a problem, say, oh, I can do this, I can optimize this, uh, I can improve this using OR. And if you found that you don't have uh, sufficient uh, um, capability, say for example, uh, problem is too complex, um, too many um, variables that you are not able to handle, then you know where to get help. Okay, um, you can at least build like a simplified model, see okay whether whether it will help with our decision. Okay, so um, that's our purpose in this class. Um, and uh, um, many of those uh, decisions, like the, those, uh, um, um, yeah, the decisions we we analyze them using computers. Okay, and uh, um, in this class, uh, we're going to use a software that's uh, adding in spreadsheet. Um, uh, why we choose that uh, spreadsheet adding, which is called the software, is because uh, spreadsheet is uh, the tool um, of today's business. Okay, when you go to a company to work, um, the company may not have a math uh, mathematical math lab, may not have uh, say like a special CAD CAM software. But when you open every computer in every office in every company, there will be for there will be um, Excel. Microsoft Excel spreadsheets uh, for sure. Okay, and uh, if you know how to use those add-ins uh, um, in Excel, that will be very easy. Okay, and I think the Excel um, 2010 is getting more and more powerful. Um, you will even learn a lot of those powerful formulas and the functions to use in this class. Um, just the, uh, the um, Excel itself. Okay, and uh, you can even like uh, copy data from a website to Excel, like uh, transfer those data, um, import those data to Excel, and uh, use them for your analysis. So that's why we choose that software for this class. Um, and uh, operations research is a field that use the computer statistics and mathematics to solve business problems. As we said, on the broader sense, it includes a lot, lot more um, topics. Okay, for example, statistics like the forecasting, um, those are kind of part of operational research too, but we're not covering this in our class. Um, it is also known, so operational research is also known as uh, management science or decision science. And uh, these uh, uh, both uh, include like the broader domain. And if you get the textbook and you look at the table of content, we're only covering until like the fifth, um, the, the eighth chapter. But uh, let me see how many chapters. Yeah, here w there, there are 15 chapters in this book. Um, and uh, some of the content we will cover that in another EMGT elective, which is advanced decision making class. Okay, so that's in next spring. Um, if you are still here in spring and uh, interested in decision analysis, you can take that class. Okay, and. Uh, um, although the particular models and techniques of OR can be traced back much, much earlier, okay, and uh, maybe some of you are doing that uh, unintentionally um, at home. For example, multitasking, sometimes you say, okay, I have those tasks that I, I, I should finish, but uh, they can, I can do some of them parallel and uh, some one, one task need to be done before the next. So um, unconscious that you're just arranging that in your mind, say, okay, I should do, say, A, um, I should start A and do B first uh, at the same time and complete C. So this is kind of like operations research um, problem too. Okay, um, the origin of operations research get started from the World War II um, when the multiple troops and uh, um, vehicles need to be um, dispatched and so um, they get started from that time. According to Operations Research Society of America, the definition of operations research is concerned with uh, scientifically deciding how to best design and operate uh, machine systems, usually under conditions requiring the allocation of, um, oh, come back. Okay. Mm. So 
sorry, technical problem. I'm trying to highlight something on my screen. Mm. Okay, so on for this definition, I would uh, highlight this. Um, as we mentioned at the very beginning, this uh, entire subject uh, exists because uh, we have to allocate all the scarce resource. That's uh, our decision is optimized within those uh, capacity, within those constraints. Okay. Okay. And uh, um, mathematical programming is a field of management science. That's what we'll talk about in this class. That finds the optimal or the most uh, efficient way of using limited resources to achieve the objective of an individual, of a business. And uh, in a word, it's about optimization. Um, some success stories uh, um, of using business using operations research. Uh, for example, Motorola. Um, at the turn of the century, uh, Motorola is really in a was really in a crisis, and uh, they were looking for ways to improve their operation by cutting cost. Okay, and because the the purchase of goods is uh, really uh, accounted for fifty percent of its cost, so that's where they look at to find try to find the solutions, and uh, um, they developed an internet-based auction system for negotiations with the suppliers. And uh, that supply, um, that's uh, that uh, uh, OR uh, based internet based uh, OR um, system was able to handle um, different uh, um, constraints, such um, different constraints and the conditions such as say um, uh, volume discount, um, multi um, multi buyer, multi supplier negotiation. So all those complex things uh, were and the multi product, the multi uh, vendor situation in that uh, uh, situation. And uh, the benefit of that internet-based auction system uh, saved them 600 million, okay, which is a lot for business. And with management, you guys are pretty familiar with that. Uh, when you see those uh, um, trucks collecting the garbage cans uh, on the road, um, um, it's one of the leading uh, waste collection companies in North America. And uh, in total, they've got uh, 26,000 vehicles service 20 million residential and the 2 million commercial customers. So if you think about how to design the route that each truck should go, okay, where to start, where to start and uh, on where to stop and uh, which road should they go. So it's a really complex uh, problem. And uh, they used uh, this uh, operations research to develop a vehicle routing optimization system. Um, it limited the 1,000 routes and uh, Annual saving is uh, forty-four million dollars. Um, another example: Hong Kong International Terminal. Um, it's one of the busiest container um, terminal in the world. So they have this uh, one hundred twenty-two yard cranes serving one hundred and twenty-five ships per week on um, I think it's two hundred and twenty-three acre um, space. Okay, so how do they? Um, schedule those trucks, uh, which, which trucks should serve which uh, uh, crane and which ship. So it's another very complex problem. And uh, using this uh, decision, so the DSS here represents the decision support system um, based on operations research. They optimized uh, this operational decision um, and get benefits, uh, which is 35% reduction in container handling cost. 50% increase in throughput. So if you got IE background, 50% increase in throughput, which is amazing. Okay, and 30% uh, improvement in the vessel turnaround time. Okay, and uh, they didn't it didn't say how much money this uh, this turned into, but uh, again, it's a significant amount of money saved. So you can see how OR can help business uh, um, optimize their decision and uh, save cost. Um, John Deere company. Another company we are really familiar with. Um, they they have uh, 2,500 dealers selling their no lawn equipment and tractors, um, and uh, these ones are all stored in five warehouses. Okay, and each dealer stocks uh, 100 products, creating 100 times that uh, 2,500, which is uh, 250,000 product stocking locations, and uh, the demand is really seasonal and erratic. Uh, remember, we talked about like in, in broad OR, 
statistics and forecasting as one part. Okay, so here like the seasonal and the erratic demand um, to solve that problem, you need some like statistic analysis. Um, also involving the uh, basic operations research, they developed this inventory system to optimize stocking levels over a 26-week uh, horizon. And the benefit is $1 billion in reduced inventory. Again, very significant. And also improve the customer service levels. Um, uh, we don't have Amazon here, but Amazon is uh, another amazing company that uh, uses uh, OR a lot. Okay, um, how can they, um, how, how many of you have the Amazon Prime? Okay, and they, they, they have like two-day shipping, right? How can they guarantee those two-day shipping? That needs a lot of OR um, solving. Okay. Okay, so these are some successful examples. Um, then we'll talk about uh, some characteristics of models because uh, in this prop in this class we're all um, we are dealing with models. We're creating models. So we'll uh, recognize the problem, create the models, implement, the solve it. Okay. But what is a model? Model usually is a simpli simplified version of the things that they represent. And uh, a valid model accurately represents just the relevant part, the relevant characteristics of the object or the decision being made. So that when in which, which means that uh, when you face a real world problem, you really have to set the boundary. Okay, which part are we looking at? And what are the main information? Um, information data need to be acquired accurately. <coughs> and uh, most spreadsheet models are similar to the generic mathematical model here, where Those are just uh, the input variables that, uh, for example, if uh, um, you guys are pretty familiar with Excel, right? Um, if you say put, us, uh, put those variables, like represent them in separate cells and uh, set another cell equal to be, to be this uh, um, dependent variable, then you can put, uh, so okay, for example, um, well it's too easy for you guys, or not an example. So it would be like, uh, for example, um, cell A1 equals to be cell B1 plus uh, uh, B2. Okay, then B1, B2 will be these uh, independent variables and the cell A1 will be these dependent variables. And um, um, the models, that the techniques that we're going to talk about in this class, the LP network, ILP, Go Programming, L, uh, MOLP, NLP. So these are one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the six um, OR techniques all belong to this uh, prescriptive um, model category, which means that uh, the form of the function, which is the relationship between your independent and the dependent variables, they are known, uh, well-defined. Which means you can write a closed form function for of the relationship. Okay, and. Uh, those independent variables are known or under decision maker's control. They are usually about the decision. They are usually the decision. Okay, we'll illustrate this later. Um, and uh, there are some other um, kind of techniques that w which all belong to OR and MS uh, that are not covered in this class. And uh, you can see that the form of the function may be unknown or ill-defined. Um, that's uh, like this, this type of some model, usually you use uh, Statistics analysis, right? Okay, and uh, if the form is well known, but uh, the independent variable is unknown, uncertain, then simulation will be that. Um, the queuing theory is uh, one major part of operations research, um, but we don't have time to cover it in this class. And uh, um, in my personal view, um, it's easier to be. Um, Analyzed those queuing theory part, um, quest, uh, problems is easier to be analyzed using simulations. Okay, so we're just covering those uh, um, prescriptive models, which means you're always able to write a closed function for your decision variables um, and your objective. Okay, and uh, here are some principles of modeling. Um, when a simple model will Okay, back. Um, when when a simple model can solve the problem, don't don't write a complex one. Okay, um, I know sometimes students try to try to overcomplicate 
uh, overcomplicate the situation or sometimes show, okay, a complex model may, may show me to be more knowledgeable. Um, but uh, we're always looking for a simple one. Um, one thing is that it saves time to save, uh, it saves time to solve, and uh, to use less computational um, space and uh, time. Okay, and um, sometimes uh, when we have uh, multiple types of um, um, techniques, uh, um, oh sorry, sometimes when we learn a specific techni technique, we try to molding the we try to mold the problem to fit this technique. Um, for example, when we are learning operational research this semester, um, whenever you see a problem, say, oh, can I just model it in operational research? Um, that's not the right, uh, that's not the right way to, to, to model things, okay? We want to find the right tool for a specific situation, okay? And um, um, the deduction phase of modeling must be conducted rigorous. Um, this does not apply very much to our um, course here. Um, models should be validated prior to implementation because uh, the, r the purpose of building and solving those models is always uh, we're trying to solve a real world problem. Um, if our model is not valid, which means it does not represent the real world situation, our recommendation is most likely to be wrong. Okay, we want to validate, okay, the, the uh, first the model is uh, simplified but accurately represent the necessary part of our situation, okay? And uh, the data information are correct. If they are not correct, we do sensitivity analysis to see, okay, what, what happens. And, okay, um, let me see somewhere else. Oh, and the, um, this, guy, this is uh, for, especially for engineering manual students, beware of overselling a model. Always um, remember that the model is a simplified version. So if it probably helps us uh, get some information and sometimes, uh, you know, we get the most uh, just uh, from analyzing the problem. Maybe the model results, uh, we're not going to use the model result at all, but it just help us analyze the situation, get some insights, okay? And uh, in OR, um, usually, um, I once went to a workshop, uh, a professor di did a lot of like uh, consulting for the companies and he said, uh, um, the customer he worked with never just wanted the one, the, the, the solution. The customer always wanted several, um, scenarios because uh, they want to have a lot of scenarios, options to choose from. Okay, so like uh, once you have the solution, ask, okay, um, is there anything else we can suggest? This really um, applies to your um, project um, and the case studies. Okay, but uh, think about what if this happens, what if that happens, can I present uh, some options for the company to decide? Okay, and um, yeah, as we mentioned, some of the primary benefits is associated with the thinking process. A model cannot be any better than the information. Okay, uh, finally, models cannot replace the decision makers. So even the what the model, the OR model suggests, okay, we should go this way. The decision maker may not decide to go this, to go that way because of uh, certain situations. And not everything can be incorporated into the model. There is something maybe not quantifiable. Um, which is important, for example, um, customer satisfaction. So when you um, model a situation where, okay, the cost is minimized, okay, but it hurt the customer um, satisfaction. Yeah, so the, the company may not uh, um, decide to go to the way that minimize the cost because customer satisfaction is more important and it's hard to quantify the dollar mind. Okay, so the, the model, the result just give the company something to um, base their decision on. Okay, so this is uh, the introduction part.